Our first update is about Spiral Galaxy captured by Hubble. This cosmic portrait, captured with a NASA ESA Hubble Space Telescope's Wide Field Camera 3, shows a stunning view of the Spiral Galaxy NGC 4571, which lies approximately 60 million light-years from Earth in the constellation Coma Berenices. This constellation, whose name translates as Bernice's hair, was named after an Egyptian queen who lived more than 2,200 years ago. As majestic as spiral galaxies like NGC 4571 are, they are far from the largest structures known to astronomers. NGC 4571 is part of the Virgo cluster, which contains more than a thousand galaxies. This cluster is in turn part of the larger Virgo supercluster, which also encompasses the local group containing our own galaxy, the Milky Way. Our next update is about multi-instrument alignment process by James Webb Telescope. While telescope alignment continues, the James Webb Space Telescope's Mid-Infrared Instrument MIRI, is still in cooldown mode. MIRI, which will be the coldest of Webb's four instruments, is the only instrument that will be actively cooled by a cryogenic refrigerator, or cryocooler. This cryocooler uses helium gas to carry heat from MIRI's optics and detectors out to the warm side of the sunshield. To manage the cooldown process, MIRI also has heaters on board to protect its sensitive components from the risk of ice forming. The web team has begun progressively adjusting both the cryocooler and these heaters to ensure a slow, controlled, stable cooldown for the instrument. Soon, the team will turn off Miri's heaters entirely to bring the instrument down to its operating temperature of less than 7 kelvins, minus 447 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 266 degrees Celsius. In the meantime, after achieving alignment with the near-infrared camera NIR cam, web engineers have begun aligning the telescope to the remaining near-infrared instruments, which is a six-week process. Next update is about confirmation of 5,000 exoplanets by NASA. Not so long ago, we lived in a universe with only a small number of known planets, all of them orbiting our sun. But a new raft of discoveries marks a scientific high point. More than 5,000 planets are now confirmed to exist beyond our solar system. The planetary odometer turned on March 21, with the latest batch of 65 exoplanets, planets outside our immediate solar family, added to the NASA exoplanet archive. The archive records exoplanet discoveries that appear in peer-reviewed scientific papers and that have been confirmed using multiple detection methods or by analytical techniques. The 5,000-plus planets found so far include small rocky worlds like Earth, vast giants many times larger than Jupiter, and hot Jupiters in scorchingly close orbits around their stars. There are super-Earths, which are possible rocky worlds bigger than our own, and many Neptunes, which are smaller versions of our system's Neptune. It's not just a number and each one of them is a new world, a brand new planet. Our next news is about March equinox. Did you know our planet has two types of seasons? They are meteorological and astronomical. What's the difference? Meteorological seasons follow the changing of the calendar, month to month, and are based on the annual temperature cycle, seasonal temperature variations modified by fluctuations in the amount of solar radiation received by Earth's surface over the course of a year. For instance, the meteorological season of spring begins each year on March 1 and will end on May 31. However, astronomical seasons happen because of the tilt of Earth's axis with respect to the Sun-Earth plane and our planet's position during its orbit around the Sun. The March equinox, also called the vernal equinox, is the astronomical beginning of the spring season in the northern hemisphere. Seasons are reversed in the southern hemisphere, where it will be autumn, also known as fall. These simultaneous seasons will occur March 20, 2022, at 1533 UTC, Coordinated Universal Time, or 1033 AM CDT, Central Daylight Time. The sun will pass directly above the equator, bringing nearly equal amounts of day and night on all parts of Earth. At the equator, an equinox results in about 12 hours of daylight and 12 hours of night. Next update is coming about Arctic winter sea ice. This image shows the average concentration of Arctic sea ice on February 25, 2022. The yellow outline shows the median sea ice extent for the month of March, when the ice generally reaches its maximum extent, as observed by satellites from 1981 to 2010. A median is the middle value. That is, half of the extents were larger than the line, and half were smaller. Arctic sea ice appeared to have hit its annual maximum extent on February 25, after growing through the fall and winter. This year's wintertime extent is the 10th lowest in the satellite record maintained by the National Snow and Ice Data Center, one of NASA's distributed active archive centers. This February, Antarctic sea ice dropped to a record low minimum extent. But unlike in the Arctic, this sea ice has shown irregular ups and downs, mainly because of the geographical features that surround it. Winds and ocean currents specifically linked to the Southern Ocean and Antarctica have a strong influence on sea ice extent. 
Danes and Antarctic sea ice are not large enough to offset the losses of the Arctic. The ice in both regions helps regulate global temperatures. Even if Antarctic gains balance sea ice levels globally, Arctic sea ice losses could still contribute to further regional and global warming. Next update is about SpaceX's private Axiom-1 astronaut flight. The commercial spaceflight company Axiom Space is cleared to launch the world's first all-private mission to the International Space Station in April, but only after a critical test of NASA's new Artemis 1 moon rocket. The Axiom-1 mission to the International Space Station passed its flight readiness review Friday, March 25, allowing the launch to proceed no earlier than April 3, atop a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket. The mission will launch from Pad 39A at NASA's Kennedy Space Center, where SpaceX launches astronaut missions for NASA on Crew Dragon spacecraft. The day's last update is coming about NASA's Perseverance rover. The rover's self-driving capabilities will be put to the test this month as it begins a record-breaking series of sprints to its next sampling location. NASA's Perseverance Mars rover is trying to cover more distance in a single month than any rover before it, and it's doing so using artificial intelligence. On the path ahead are sand pits, craters, and fields of sharp rocks that the rover will have to navigate around on its own. At the end of the 3-mile, 5-kilometer, journey, which began March 14, 2022, Perseverance will reach an ancient river delta within Jezero Crater, where a lake existed billions of years ago. This delta is one of the best locations on Mars for the rover to look for signs of past microscopic life. Using a drill on the end of its robotic arm and a complex ample collection system in its belly, Perseverance is collecting rock cores for return to Earth, the first part of the Mars sample return campaign.